This is the new Motorola Moto G Fast. It costs $200. And this is the Moto E. It costs $150. Which one should you get? Let's find out. Motorola has a wonderful reputation when it comes to making affordable phones. Earlier this year, they launched the Moto G Stylus and the Moto G Power. And now there's the Moto G Fast, which has a similar build quality and similar performance, but only costs $200. Then there's the Moto E, which repackages some of last year's tech from the fabulous Moto G7 into a new body, and it costs $50 less than the Moto G Fast. Both phones pack a ton of value for your dollar. But if you're trying to decide which one to get, I'm here to help. So let's begin with what the phones have in common and we'll start with the 1520 by 720 resolution LCD screen on both phones. In 2020, that's pretty low resolution. And in use, I, well, I just wanted things to look sharper. Color-wise, the Moto G Fast seems more accurate and well, the screen is just overall brighter than the Moto E. That said, I do miss the higher resolution screens on the Moto G Stylus and the Moto G Power. As far as storage, both phones come with 32 gigabytes and support expandable storage via a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes, which you should seriously consider because in the couple weeks I had these review units, I filled these phones up with photos and videos in no time. One of the most wonderful features found on both phones is a headphone jack. Let that sink in. Both phones run a close to stock version of Android 10 and have Motorola's helpful and fun shortcuts like the double karate chop to turn on the flashlight. There's a fingerprint reader on the back of both phones and it works excellent. Also, the bodies are rated IP52 for water and dust resistance, meaning it could survive a splash or two and some light rain. Unfortunately, both phones have a single bottom speaker and it sounds okay, uh, but Sometimes when I was watching like a YouTube video or uh, on a video chat, my hand would cover the speaker and it would make everything sound muffled. And yeah, it's not the best. Now let's talk about where things are different. And probably the biggest difference between the two phones are the cameras. Hardware wise, the Moto G Fast inherits a 16 megapixel wide angle camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a two megapixel macro camera from the back of the Moto G Power. In bright conditions, photos look good, but pictures taken indoors or in low light can suffer from image noise and look a touch soft. The macro camera is a blast to use and you can get really close to your subject in photos and videos, but that said, I can't tell if it's more of a novelty or a really nice to have feature. Ultra wide angle photos have decent image quality, but sometimes can be just a touch soft. As far as video, the Moto G Fast can shoot 4K. Take a look. As you can see, the dynamic range isn't great and the image quality is a tad soft. All right, I'm on the Moto G Fast on the rear camera. It shoots 4K video and I'm outside, it's a little windy. Some motorcycles going by as well. But how's it look? How's it sound? For $200, remember this phone shoots 4K, which is pretty amazing. On the front is an eight megapixel camera that yielded pretty, well, decent selfies. So I'm on the Moto G Fast on the selfie camera. Unlike the back camera, does not shoot 4K, instead it shoots uh, full HD. That said, this is a $200 phone. I mean, it's amazing that you get access to an ultra wide camera, a macro camera and 4K video. But if cameras and photography are your priority, you're best to pay nearly twice the price and get a Google Pixel 3a or an iPhone SE, which have better camera systems all around. Now on the Moto E, there are two rear cameras, though you're really only gonna be using the 13 megapixel camera to take photos. The two megapixel depth camera is used for creating portrait photos. And by the way, it takes really good portrait photos and so does the Moto G Fast. Generally, photos from the Moto E don't have as much detail as those from the Moto G Fast, but I like the punchy contrast and colors it produces even if the dynamic range is pretty limited. Unlike the Moto G Fast, the rear cameras on the Moto E only capture 1080p video. Videos captured in good light don't look over sharpened or overly contrasty. Again, this is not gonna win any video awards, but the phone only costs $150. I mean, come on. 
That's really deep. On the front is a five megapixel camera that captures pretty soft selfies, even with beauty mode turned off. Now let's talk about screens. The Moto E has a 6.2 inch screen, whereas the Moto G Fast has a 6.4 inch screen and it has a hole punch cut out for the selfie camera, which I think looks incredibly premium compared to the water drop cutout on the Moto E. Body-wise, the Moto E is lovably plastic. In the hand, it feels light, which I kind of like. Now, your admiration for this may vary. The Moto G Fast is a slick looking phone. In fact, it looks like the iPhone XS Max, and that's not a bad thing. In the hand, it feels solid and robust. And remember, it only costs $200. The Moto G Fast comes with three gigabytes of RAM, whereas the Moto E only has two. The Moto G Fast has a Snapdragon 665 processor, which is the same one found in the more expensive Moto G Power and Moto G Stylus. Though, those phones have four gigabytes of RAM. The Moto E has a Snapdragon 632 processor, which is the same one found in last year's Moto G7. When it comes to opening apps, using Google Assistant and editing photos, the Moto G Fast is, well, fast compared to the Moto E. Uh, it just has a little more pep in its step. That said, when I had a few different apps running in the background on the Moto E, it would become a little laggy. Not horribly so, but enough to make me wonder, in a year or so, as newer versions of the apps come out and Android 11 comes out, how well this phone is gonna be able to handle those. I played games like Alto's Odyssey and PUBG on both phones and they were fine. But when I played Asphalt 9 on the Moto E, it got hot immediately. Battery wise, the Moto G Fast has the same 4,000 milliamp hour battery as found in the Moto G Stylus. It had no problem making it through a single day and at the end of two days had 10% battery left. On the other hand, the Moto E has a 3,550 milliamp hour battery and it had no problem getting through a single day. But on day two, I found myself having to charge it around midday. I still have more battery tests to run on both phones. So check out my written comparison on CNET.com for more updates. Finally, let's talk price. Both of these phones are solid options for under $200, but you might not even find yourself paying that much. That's because Motorola G phones and E phones often get heavily discounted. Sometimes carriers bundle them for free on a contract or you'll get phone bill credits. But those same discounts also apply to the other Moto G phones, the Moto G Stylus and the Moto G Power. But here's the wrinkle. Those same discounts also might hit other Motorola budget phones. That means you might find the $300 Moto G Stylus for $200 or the amazing, one of my favorite Motorola phones, the Moto G Power, you might find that for $150. And either one of those phones at those discounted prices are a better value than the Moto G Fast or the Moto E. Well, until those phones get discounted. So if you wanna learn any more about the Moto G Fast or Moto E, take a look at my article on CNET.com, but I wanna hear from you. Are you interested in either of these phones? If so, which one are you gonna get? Also, if you have questions, throw them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.